Good morning and welcome to an icy cold Winterberg in Germany in the Hochsauerland. Winter has definitely arrived. The town is full of skiers and we are ready for race four in the Men's Skeleton World Cup. Hello everybody, I'm Martin Haven, alongside me John Morgan. World Cup action, European Championship to be decided, John. And this could be a happy playground for a lot of athletes. It's quite a forgiving track, but produced great results yesterday. Compared to where they started in Whistler and then Lake Placid and Altenburg, this track's a lot easier than those three. Built in the mid 70s, short, only 1,300 meters plus. Trechikova, no surprise, he's the leader. But watch this first curve. They put this first curve in seven, eight years, eight years ago when they reconstructed the whole start area. That's zero curve because they want to leave all the rest of the curves and the numbers that have been for 35, 40 years on the track. And, up here, the speeds are just so slow, it almost lulls the athlete into sleeping. And you can make a mistake up here, and you could really have no chance at the bottom. So perfection at the top of the track. This is still above probably the most pivotal part of the track, the Chrysler coming in right here. You have to get in and exit underneath where you came in. It's 280 degree whip around, and speeds now get to 60, 65 miles an hour. Curve nine, it's a lot of problems for the bobsledders in that curve nine. We'll see what it does to the skeleton athletes. 11, now the 12, 13, 14 combination, the labyrinth, three quarter combination. Every track's gotta have one. Uphill finish curve, still throw away some time here, and now through and down. And Dukars, no surprise, he owns a track record. Those two names. Martin Stukos and Alexander Chechikov, they have bestraddled this sport for the last decade as the two leading lights. And Chechikov, like all the other Russians, back in action this weekend. Air temperature minus two. I tell you what, it feels a lot more bitter than that. After minus six ice yesterday, it's up to minus two degrees. And you saw there Christopher Grothair, our most recent race winner among those uh, making final preps to the sled. There's Martin Stukors in the background in the red and blue jacket. You saw Alexander Trechikov. And there's a little icy bit of track alongside the sled park where they all warm up. Trechikov and Sumbin Jung might well be expected to be among the very fastest starters. But this is a track that Martin Stukors, like every other one, John, has done quite well on. Uh, winner last year, World Championship winner the year before, and then one, two, three, four, five, five previous wins the last non-Martin Stukos winner on this track was 2008. Florian Grassel from Bavaria was the winner. Yeah. It's been eight years. He's won eight consecutive years. Grassel's had three kids since he lost, since Martin Stukos didn't win on this track last. Martins goes off in the middle of the five, the six to 15 group. That's your top 10 random draw. The first five random draw from positions 11 to 15 in the World Cup points. And from there on down to our first time World Cup starter, Dennis Lorencic, they go in World Cup order. 28 sleds, big field. Only the fastest 20 go through to heat two. First of our sleds on the ice is Dave Christian of Canada, former rugby player, this teacher. Biggest, tallest man in the competition now. Thickest man, I would say. He may be the tallest, but he's definitely the thickest. Start, well, on this track, it's like a bobsled, like it most, but it's very important on this track because it's a short track where the speeds are slow up top here. And, you know, Dave hasn't really had a good season. Last year, he had some better results early on. And, you know, maybe he's trying to peak at the end of the year and not the beginning of the year. Didn't make the cut last week in Altenburg, only 23rd spot. He was 11th at home in Whistler, 17th in Lake Placid. So he wants to stop the sag in performance and bring it around here. And this is a track where body mass and a clean line could really help you. Well, he's got the body mass. He's got the experience. I would expect he will he'll make the cut this week. Well, he's got the knowledge of these European tracks, certainly. Spent a lot of time racing here in the Europa Cup and Intercontinental Cup before making his 50th. World Cup debut. 
What did we just have? 57 47. So, uh, two seconds away from the track record, as we have been all weekend. All weekend. Yeah. Yeah. There's been. Siberian snowstorm was in here yesterday morning, and uh, you know, we survived that, and so did the athletes. We had a good woman's bob race, and hopefully there's no snow elements here. Look at the start. You'll see a lot of different techniques. Not everybody does this the same, especially when you're 6'2", about 220 like this guy is. You know, you talk rugby the way I talk rugby. He's a, he's he's a, a second guy. row forward or a flanker, isn't he? Yeah, he's he? a flanker for sure. With all that speed. Yeah. Matthias Guggenberg losing the speed this season. He's had a back injury the previous few years. Last couple of seasons he's been healthy, but now with a knee he, he might jog here. He might yeah. just jog here. He's got a really bad knee. They think they were going to drain it. Yeah, he's doing better than I thought. Well, you know, it's when you're on the line, Ooh, suddenly the pain goes. Yeah. When you get to the bottom, it returns. Five strikes. Yeah. You know, we were with him on Monday night at the little water and hill here. They call the Irish bar, and talking to him, and he says, you know, you know, he just wanted to get two trips in. He might even just, you know, just sit on the slide and come down just for the World Cup points. And uh, it was a cartridge issue he was talking about. Yeah. And his name. Corner five with a smell of waffles drifting across from the coach's stand on the outside, dropping down through six into the Kreisel. Two pressures here, not like the three in Altenburg. The third comes just as you're exiting. Not close, hundredth of a second. Wow. Well, this is one of the features of this track, isn't it? That that it is relatively well known, and so the performance Ooh, margins can be tiny. Coming back. Still 100. Got a chance here at the bottom speed. I don't know if it's just going to be close. Oh, it's the wall. 200. He had better speed, so that deficiency of 100 turned into a green number 200s. And that's because he carried better speed in the bottom part of the track. 200s faster on the push, 200s a kilometer later down at the bottom of the track. That's the gap between them. So it's also the persona of this track. Yeah. Close. Oh, look, look at that look at limp. I think this Yikes. We're going to see him slip here at the start. I bet it's related to his knee. Let me think. It is his, it is his right knee. Oh. Right there, look yeah. at that. Look, there's no confidence in that. Look at the way the leg came yeah, up. You so, know what that is? That's his knee just knee gave, way gave way on that last yeah, stride. So that obviously, you know, no give him a red is. badge of courage. And then down here, we could see somebody flip there. We've seen a lot of people flip, but of course, it's right at the finish line. Third new race suit for Spaniard under Mirambel, having his best season so far 15th, 13th, 16th in the three races this year. What a great looking new suit. Well, he's a promoter, self promoter, which you have to be in this sport. You know, with his job, he gets a chance to do a lot of traveling. He told me the story of uh, a Spanish athlete that they covered uh, in San Francisco. He went all the way out there at this Rugby Sevens event. And, you know, I didn't realize he had that extensive of a job. Well, he does. I mean, he works a lot with the Spanish Football Association, the soccer teams that go abroad to play in European Champions League and so on. He's one of the guys that organizes travel for them, takes them with them, or travels with them to, as a fixer. But you're right, you know, other sporting disciplines are sort of picking up on these guys and he's starting to get interest from others. Well, he's close, four minutes. Now he's got green numbers. Boy, he's just improved. Wow. Last year, he wouldn't have not, not even been close to beating either one of the two guys that just came down. And here, fastest time of the day, 57.35. His start, though. Started 1,200s back, finished a tenth in front. No wonder Martin Rettel, his coach, is pleased with that. Yeah, he's starting to figure out the... He started to figure the sport out, and he's got Martin Reddle's tricks involved. And again, off a knee surgery in the summer, so he's still building up that start power and speed. Run, nice. Yeah. Do you know what? He, it, he's just brimmed with confidence. Watch his, watch his head here. And this is the big pressure per curve of 11. Kind of elaborate, three quarters. Head bouncing around. Yeah. That's the G forces. Vamos. Para yeah. segunda. Second run for him. I'm pretty certain he's going to be in there as well. Now, here's one of our World Cup rookies this season, Kevin Boyer. Came up through the junior ranks, made it into the Canadian team in their national trials just pre-season. So first year in the World Cup for him. Pretty good start athlete. Yeah. 
He should be the best starter of the four. Didn't make the cut when we were in Lake Placid. He was 24th, but 17th in Whistler, 19th last weekend. He was the only Canadian to make the cut in the world. I'm surprised he doesn't have a better start there, but it's probably since it's his first World Cup appearance here. I wonder if he's been on the track before. He'll have been here on ICC and possibly oh, Europa good. Cup. There you go. But he won't have the experience of, certainly, of the, the next group of 10 that we're going to see on top front rows. And uh, Ice just took their a little bit of a body lean going into Kreisel. Look at the bullet shape. Oop, flop there on the exit. It's red numbers. But it's like every sled has come down. It's within 100. Yeah. I think this is tough. There's, there's more than three people can win this race. There's about 20 who could easily be on the podium. He's got third best speed, so he's probably looking like a third or fourth place puppet for oh! 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 the slide. Oh! 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 Well, you know, he's the least experienced with the four athletes have just come down. And... But he knew not to steer out of the final corner. Hang on to the speed, let it fly. Well, he might have steered too much in the middle of the curve, and that's what put him up on the outlet centrifugal force, forces you up. And he gets hung out to dry there. There's the beaver on the helmet. Oh. It was a little wild. <laughs> well, it was a little wild. wild. Up top. Well, you always, say, you always say that bobsleigh is the champagne of thrill of sports. This is. This is definitely the punk rock, rock and roll yeah. ice oh, look sliding. At this. Look at that right there. You want to come out and be a skeleton rider? See think any of that in Segulda, Tim Singer? No, I don't think so. Mattia Gaspari of Italy. Only a second World Cup race, the entire pre-Christmas New Year break. He spent doing his basic training. He's joining one of uh, Italy's police forces. He said, OK, miss some time on ice. The bonus is there's a check every month. And, you know, you can't overestimate how important that is to these athletes. He had a really good season last year, top 10. World Cup points, decent start. And, you know, he's, he's really the great Italian hope here because there's no female Italian. Yep. And, you know, he, again, he, he impressed us last year. Whistler here last, uh, in Winterberg last year, the World, uh, where was he? 15th place in the World Cup, second race of the season. Oh, yeah. 200's down, but you know, he's he's got the ability to find in the bottom, and he's gonna need to. Yeah, 14th in Altenburg, a track that suits his driving style, but still only nine hundredths of a second away. He's quiet on the sled down here, gets the best speed he could into the top two. Oh, right now he's falling back to Still 1400s, solidified that margin, 2100s back. Yeah. So he picked up a little bit of the bottom, but not what he wanted. I thought he would have done a little bit better. He's 1100s in front of Kevin Boyer, and he is 900s behind Dev Gresh Cheshin, so he's the Italian salami in the Canadian sandwich. I ought to stop making. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't come out. Didn't get to you the way it left me. A little high there in the crossover. He has to probably steer too much. And he comes into the middle of this next curve late. You can see the other runner marks are up higher than that. He was like two inches down where he should have been. Anna Mirambel of Spain, our leader. First five sleds down here in Winterberg. Start draw number six here in Winterberg, Germany, for Axel Jung, the man from Altenberg. His home track last weekend, he was on the podium in third position, but he too struggling with an injury wow. since the start of the season. Well, that tells you why he's one of the top athletes in the field, because he's also one of the top starting athletes in the field. And that'll help. Normally, he wouldn't expect to be a quarter of a second away from a start record. It's cool, it's crisp, it's not too windy. He's not still got the speed that we used to see from him when he was fully fit. That should be back oh, for the World tenths. Championships. That's a big six advantage. Tenths. Mind you, he was a quarter second faster at the start than Ander Mirambo. 500 people he had to track his home track in Altenburg last week, all wearing those section shirts. Yep. Look at the bolt form. I mean, this is as good as it gets. The speed, 127 and change. He's got 128.6. First person to break the 128 barrier. 
That's 79.9 miles an hour, 56.60, and that's a lot closer to that track record. Now we're a second and 900s away, but that's a top five run at least. Maybe better. We're gonna find out. Next guy down is, is gonna tell us how good that was. A Yovo, you can't argue with that. Good start, good technique. Look at him use that arm like a sprinter. Now the crossover, and now to get on there with that power step. One last step, power, arch your back. Look at your feet, ankles come up. That's textbook. Hit that with his, chest, or his hips probably first. Germans are very proficient at the start technique, that's for sure. Yellow vest of our World Cup points leader. And this is Korea's Sunbin Young. Gold medal in Whistler, bronze medal in Lake Placid. Off the podium last time in Altenburg. Time to get back to his winning ways, perhaps. He's a pretty thick guy himself. Boy, just took up too much of that curve. Start for 88. 1300s away from the start record, but he took a lot, I think he took a lot of speed away because he took a lot of that curve one and sort of skidded out of it. And that has only got a 1200s lead now. With that start, he had a 1300s advantage at the start, and now we're 12. Let's see what he does here. He's still 12, so we can we say stop the bleeding we the first do. time. And now he'll probably rocket that into a 15 2000s lead, knowing his abilities. 13, only 100 better. Still, this is over a German on a German track. Yeah. Don't forget, he might yeah, be is... from Altenburg, but all the Germans will know this as well as Look they know. Look at this form now. He's starting to rocket. 128.6. He's got 129. 80.3 miles an hour. hour. 20 hundreds wow. ahead. So, that's yeah. two tenths of a second. That'll do, says Coach Richard Bromley. That will do. So Bromley sleds at the moment, first and third, unless they've managed to persuade Axel Junk onto a Bromley. I don't think it's, I think he's on an FES sled. Axel Junk second. Sunbin Young leads on a British built Bromley sled. Adam, and Mirambel still Look at third. Look the size of this guy's quads. Yeah. This, probably the, from the hips down, this guy has got a bigger frame than anybody. He's got it going on. He's a big boy. Yeah. Here's the problem though gets up there too high. You can see where everybody else is. They come around the bottom of that. He got up there too high, came out on the left side of our screen, his yeah. right, and sort of a, did a tap, and that might have cost him a tenth. Well, you saw the little toe drag as well to try and stop that happening. Next up is Alexander Tretiakov, our Olympic champion, and the start record holder at 4.75 seconds. Now, do you know what? The ice is just about the right temperature. This is uh, low 80s, mid 80s. 87. 487, 488 for Sun Bin Young. And he's got a little start, uh, zero curve issue. He came out, wasn't a perfect exit, but you know, we're gonna find out. You see these green numbers turn to red here pretty quick, but no, that means he's had better start velocity than Sun Bin Young because he shouldn't have been 700s better like that, or, some big young mistake was more devastating at curve one, and now he's already thrown it away. Yeah, a little toe drag through corner three just before you go uphill from four to five. And, and it is subtle nuances here. I mean, even the athletes sometimes find it hard to read where somebody's gaining or losing speed. Four hundredths of a second. Eight, following back more, probably at 120. He's full kilometer down at speed. Last corner, head up, looking for the line. Second. Okay. Well, Sumin Jung of Korea has the lead. Alexander Chechikov in second place. Axel Jung in third. Ahead of Ander Mirambel and Matthias Guggenberger. Well, Koreans, remember, they're it's European Championship, so Tretchikov's in the lead right now for the yes, European title. And Ander Mirambel of Spain is currently second. Eight down, 20 still to come, though. Watch from behind. Now, does he take a little toe yeah. steer? Yeah, I think that, uh, look at the toe yeah. steer there, and then he gets into the middle of the curve, and when they show us the exit, he's way in the middle. He should be on the left side there. He was trying to keep himself yeah. left. That left toe down drags you very slightly to the left. Latvian flags, what does that mean? The same as it always means, a big cheer for Martins Ducours. Superman. Well, 
a little bit like Tom Christensen with Le Mans racing and endurance racing in Denmark, this man almost single-handedly has converted an entire wow. nation to Whoa. a sport. Yeah, but that's one of the most efficient start times I've ever seen him have. Yeah. I've never seen him be a tenth back of the top start. Trechikov, he's usually within three or four hundredths. And sometimes he's, he's matches there the best start, but boy, I don't know what kind of magic he could pull here, but I'm very surprised at that start time. A tenth of a second behind Ooh, and it's only four. It's Hundreds. not, with him, it's not just about the start, it's every single element. I think he got through curve one better than both the Russian and Korean sled. And, you know, what is he doing? Perfect driving down the track. He's being rewarded with what he does. He's yeah. the best athlete that the sport's ever seen in the last decade, and this is ridiculous. 129.8. Oh, and look at that, right down Quarter the middle of the, of the final corner. He's 10 hundreds behind at the start. An astonishing drive again from Martins Ducos. It's just hard to exaggerate how good, good he this is. Guy is. Just another day at the office, hello. Yeah. If this was a racing game and there was a green line that showed you the perfect racing line, he'd have left it. Surprised at the start though. Let's see if we can pick anything up here. Watch him launch, look at the heels come up. Ooh, just a little played. over rotation yeah, that, there. That left, little... His right leg, look at that. Look at the feet turning here. No touch though. Yeah, no he touch. didn't touch and he got Using around curve one better. It looked like a weird yeah. last power shot. Just looked like sled. he slightly overran the yeah. sled, was yeah. over the top of it almost. So Martins Dukos of Latvia leads from Sumin Jung and Alexander Tretikov. What can Matt Antoine do? Lies third in the World Cup standings, bronze, silver, and then ninth last week in Altenburg are his results for the season. Antoine last year, ninth place in Winterberg. Come on out there! Go! Go! He's going to give up. He's going to be a 6.15 or something, 6.12. 6, 5, 6, 5. Instead of 6, but that's... Now he's, he's sentenced to hope for a perfect run and maybe finish in the top six. Because that type of start, seventh best start, to do a lot on this short track to That's have a chance to come back. That's been an American male slider in the medals on this track since before the games in Torino. Said Zach Lund. Why, I can't go back any further than that. There are no good results online, but... Maybe Zach Lund or Eric Bernardes did yeah. not win medals here. They may have, but again, it's been such a happy hunting ground for the Germans over the years. Good lines, though, from Matt Antoine. Looks He's very relaxed. He's got it back to five. The speed is still two kilometers down to the best, but... Eight tenths behind. Great. That's a great run. Well, Seventh best start, fought himself into the fifth position. That's not bad. He's a long way away from the front runners. Start 5.17 compared to 4.88 of Sunbin Young. There's Zach Lund right there, yeah. the US jacket, helping him out. Comparing notes with our floor manager, Debbie, babies, kids. Uh, it's, it's not just a metaphorical family, it's a literal family, this business. Martis Dukors leads Sumbin Young and Alexander Tretiakov. Our top three in the World Cup rankings include Matt Antoine. He is down in seventh. Thomas Dukors of Latvia, 11th in the start draw. His brother currently is the race leader. What can the older of the two do? 5.01, that's a decent getaway. I also think he had good velocity because that first curve, he came around very smooth. A little bit of drift on the exit. But with that start, look what? Up He's in the 300s. Lead. Well, that's don't forget. Brother. It's against his brother's time. Don't forget that the Dukos brothers are trying different equipment, different runners, different setups. So they may have an identical sled platform. Thomas might have gone deliberately for a different setup to Martin's, so they're learning twice as much. However, I, 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 I think that they're on race runners. They did the setup in the first four events. I think for Thomas to be in this position, but then the leader. Where did he finish here last year? I think he got a podium here last year. Nope. Down to 100th. Worlds, he was in the bronze medal position. 
So he's going to be the Dukar's brothers, the top two. Top two by two hundreds of a second. Well, there are more than one way to skin a cat, and Martins and Thomas have just proved exactly that. Behind his brother at the start, ahead of him all the way through until the final curve. I think, I think that's he, where he lost out. I think he had the best in and out of curve one of anybody so far. Okay, do and not think, fall over on the outrun. <laughs> that's not... Watch the head bang in here. Look at the head come. Yeah. Look at the down. Look at look at the G-force force it down. That's on the take on a nine. And this is big, big, big 10-11 combination. And then into the finish. See his brother left tracks right down the middle. And that extra meter or so up the wall and that rattling yeah. around. Late, that's two hundredths of a second. That's late on that curve. Otherwise, they might have tied. Jack Thomas's father there in the blue jacket, his mum on the right and his girlfriend on the left, supporting Don Parsons as well. Jack goes later in the run. Don Parsons, the lead British male skeleton slider. And let's see what he can produce here. Eighth, tenth and twelfth so far this season. Another tall guy, a little bit like Matt Antoine, him and yep. Matt of the same frames. Long, lean, and rangy. Well, he was in seventh place in the race here last season. Sixth best start. Seventh, sixth on the clocks now. See the section of the track where it starts to really fly. Eight. Oh, he tapped out of eight. That's going to definitely cost him nine. 10, 11, here comes the Labyrinth. 12, look at the Labyrinth three-quarter combination. That's a challenge, man. Yep. Through the final corner, and 80, oh, a full second back, seventh place. A 57-1-4, there's Eric Bonotas. Former American, it's rumored to be one of the last American medalists on this track. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a guess. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised. They're the, the only non-European to take a medal since 20, 2006 is John Montgomery. Okay, what's the entrance to crowd? It's pretty good. And you know you want to exit out of here with a slingshot effects, and here he comes down and below Kreisel bangs the wall. Mm, big hit and as big well. Big hit there, and that's right where you're starting to reach maximum speed. Not over thrilled with that one. What makes you say that? Yeah. Next up from Germany, Alexander Gassner. Now, this is a hometown boy here. Actually, Junk at home last week. Gassner, this is his closest World Cup track. Sounds like a local crowd. He's got Veltons on his uh, yeah. quads. We know what Belkins is, it's the yeah. local brewery. You had it dribble down your tie yesterday. 506 getaway, that's decent speed from Gassner. Returning to the World Cup after about three seasons away, not that he wasn't sliding, it's just that uh, he had a little lapse in form, was at the lower tier in the Intercontinental Cup. Came in for headshots beginning of the season in Whistler. The North American Cup yesterday at St. Moritz, last couple days. The Germans went one, two, three in the men, and the German women went one, two, three. So that tells you about... You one, think two, three, the, four, I think. Yeah, so yeah. The, do you think the German program is set up to find... They didn't really approach skeleton, I think, like everybody else did in the last decade. A little, little now, bit of strength in depth going on there. Yeah, the ends, ooh, that's really, really hard hit on the take on to one of those labyrinths. 12, I think. Oh. oh, and again, big hit on the exit. Sixth best time, sixth best at the start. And uh, if we talk form coming down the track, if there was a ratings, he wouldn't get a good one for that. That was a hard hit. Results this season, seventh and ninth, then just off the podium in fourth place last weekend in Altenburg. Came in for his headshot beginning of the season. He said, I bet you're surprised to see me. And they're pleased. This is out of 10 11 into the labyrinth. So watch this hit. High line on the exit. Thing. It almost throws him off the sled. And then, you know, there's extra steering down there to correct that. That causes some time issues. Alexander Gassner of Germany lies sixth behind Axel Junkin, fifth. 
Our top Russian is Alexander Chetikov in fourth position. Nikita Tregibov, though, has got a chance to break into the top three. This explosive starter. See what he can do. This one of the youngsters in the field. 499. And he sort of flops off there. Look at the way he steers around curve two. He had a big skid going there in the two. So he should be really 20, 25 hundreds down at this next clock. Tregibov's results, fifth Only in Whistler. Eight. That's very that's very surprising. Was fifth that? in Whistler, eighth in Lake Placid, sixth last week in Altenburg. 16. This is a good looking run. Fourth fastest start. This could be a top four or five. He's drifting a little bit away to sixth. Mm, he could still put Tretikov under pressure. We talked to Tretikov about him a couple of seasons ago, didn't we, when we were in Sochi. He said, yeah, these young kids. Forgetting, of course, that once he was the young kid with all the speed that everybody was really this trying to This looks like he's going to knock his teammate. It's going to be close. Oh! Yes. 400, no, 700's in front of Tretikov. Tretikov. Yeah. And Tretikov started... 87. Better. Yeah, 87 compared to zero. Boy, if, if they show us curve one to two, that looked weird out of curve one as he drifted into two. But of course, sometimes when you see all the. Now watch this. This is takes a lot of that. He had his toe out. Now watch the way he starts to skid. Look at that. Look at this. That sled's not coming straight at us. Yeah. He's skidding around that curve. He turns it into a turn to get into corner two, but all the same. And again, long skid there. He could have been further up the order. He's got medal potential here, Nikita Tregobov. And there's only one Russian that's taken medals on this track, and his first name is not Nikita, it's Alex. Oh, beg your pardon, Sergei Chudinov also took silver here in the post-Olympic season. Chudy. Christopher Grothair, our first-time winner last weekend. Ninth, seventh, gold. That's his season so far. Nice entry under the slide. Let's see how he gets around here. And a lot straighter than the last slide. Yep. 900's down at the start, right? So we have the seventh best start. Well, 506, down. so carrying a little less speed onto that corner perhaps allows you to control it a bit better. Then there's the experience as well. Good form. Let's see how he gets set up here for Kreiser. Nice. Speeds. This. And can you hear any touches, any scrapes, any scratching? Nothing. He's shaping the sled with his body. No extra steers coming in. Top six round from Christopher Grote here at the moment. Can he get in amongst the Russians? He's going to be the top German. Speed, 128 plus to have a chance. 129, three. This is top three speed. Really good. He should come into the top four or five. Fifth five. place. He is ahead of Chechikov, ahead of the Olympic champion. And ahead of his two teammates. Yeah. So this is, uh, listen, there's a race within a race. You don't think he doesn't want to know where his other two teammates are? Mm -mm. There's a thing about being Germany one, two, or three, as it is every country. Roadhair was fifth here last year. He lies fifth in the first heat this year. Look at this. This is not easy. And believe me, that last step, you hear in basketball, follow through. Golf, same thing golf. I mean, that's a follow through to get on that sled with that power step is so important. Martins and Thomas Ducours lead Sunbin Young of Korea. Top three with our first 15 sleds down. 14 to come. Barrett Martineau in 16th in the start draw. There are 15 races already in, five spots remain, and we have 14 athletes trying to take them. So for Barrett Martineau and the rest of the field now, real pressure to make the second heat. We're going to send nearly a third of the athletes home after heat one. Good results, Good results for him last week in Altenburg. Yep. I think, I think he surprised himself. Barry Martineau currently 11th in the World Cup, 10th Ooh. in Whistler. Ooh. Mistake there. And 8th in Altenburg. He was so pleased with that. A career high for him. On that track too. Which... Yeah, well, I mean, on, uh, certainly in Altenburg, Altenburg. That might be a career high in, on any European track for Bear. Good form. 
The start time, ninth best start. So hovering around the top ten, he's losing a little yeah, speed. No, it's a little bumpy. No speed at all. He's two kilometers off the top speed spots. Eleventh. So he had the ninth best start, slid to an eleventh place finish. Good like it. You can see him shaking his head. You know that mistake he made. Look at that. I think he, that's venting. Look how he's angry with himself and. Well, the mistake he made just now up it. You can't walk away without your slip. You got to yeah, get yeah. your slip. Oh, someone else is getting uh, the Dennis Ducours is there. Okay, this is into Kreisel, but the mistake he made was before Kreisel because he exited wrong. And Hangs it up high and late out but of here, Kreisel. But he still hadn't caught up here. Yeah. Look, look at this. Look, I mean, he's still having a problem there on the exit of Kreisel. You can tell. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you very much. Well, this is why the athletes get on with them, each other and the coaches so well, is there's only one person that can mess up your run, and it's you. For every athlete, it is you versus the mountain. This is Nathan Crumpton from the USA last year, his World Cup rookie season. Interesting way of coming off the blocks. Look, two hands on the handles to start. The old way used to be like pushing a wheelbarrow, hand on either handle, then we went to the off to one side start. Good starter, 505. Yeah. He's 12 to World Cup points. He's hoping to finish at like eighth or ninth. He needs to move up into the top 10 of World Cup points is his goal here before the World Championships. And, you know, he's a track and field specialist, Princeton University. And North American slider, best result so far this season. Last week in Altenburg, where he was 10th. He was 11th in Lake Placid, a track that he, quote, should know better. You know, we were talking to him at breakfast the other day, just to hear him discuss velocity. Yeah. He's, just, he's just too smart to be in a sport. Velocity, <laughs> philosophy, and all sorts of other philosophies in the middle that, that we're, we're left behind by, yeah. He's starting to take a very scientific approach to the sport. Yeah. This guy's got some potential for U.S. skeleton. Well, last year here, he made the cut in his first senior race in Winterberg. He was in 18th place. The previous week, he'd been 24th in Altenburg. Now, the rate of progress is such that he is currently 10th place here in Winterberg. You know, he's basically almost halving the number of positions. Well, he wanted the top 10. Well, there's 10th, and he, yeah. he's got a chance to stay there. Well, he's absolutely going to make the second heat. You know, his teammate was... 1200 slower at the start and beat him at the bottom but his teammates been down the track a lot look at him late here yeah. at nine this is nine to ten you can see him flop off you can see his feet come apart there and i think the spritz on race day is just making the steers that they're expecting to take a fraction late i can feel it moving underneath me something moving yeah. underneath reese thornbury of new zealand now we talked so many Athletes having a breakout season and a Marambel. Reese Thornbury's another, and part of the reason is the man behind. Martin Rettel, coaching the Belgians, has also got capacity for a whole bunch of athletes from smaller nations, and that is allowing them to really accelerate their progress. Not a great exit of one. In fact, he came off late. He had a little S drive down between curve one and two, and that means friction. Last. A lot of bad things happen with friction up at the top of the track where speeds are slow. Last year, his first season in the World Cup. Didn't do Altenburg, Winterberg, Koenigsegg before Christmas. So he stayed in North America in the first part of the season. And the 17th best start. He's got it up to 13th. And again, you know, rugby player, very physical, lots of body mass, and really learning fast how to steer. He's pulling places in, 12th place. This could be a top 10 yeah, slide. This is pretty good. Speed, you know, almost 128. But, you know, this guy's improved. 11th Love place, and that's exactly tied. where he finished last week. Tied with yep. Dominic Parsons. Now, Dominic Parsons is way more experienced slider than Reese Thunberg here. And again, Martin Rettel, very happy with that. And it's not just yeah. Martin, he's got a whole little group of coaches. Yeah, so it's like being part of a big nation. You know, they're all in our hotel. There's three or four different nations sitting there having lunch, watch his, having breakfast. Watch his hands here. Oh, I think he missed a little bit. He doesn't look at that on the left. Tiny uh, little slip, that. over rotates. Then he has to shuffle himself yeah, a fraction that's, that's what forward he on the sled. Yeah, he wasn't comfortable there. That's why I told you, you said he made, he made a mistake out of curve one. He yeah, wasn't everyone. settled. Happy with that. Good run. Yeah. A good run down the track, no doubt. Next up is. Okay. 
Stefan Geisler, 21-year-old from Austria. His first slides were in the build-up to the Youth Olympic Games when he was 15 years old. Since then, he's done a handful of uh, European Cup and Intercontinental Cup races and four Junior World Championship appearances, but this is his World Cup debut. They say he's going to be a decent starter, but wouldn't know there with that time. Still just 21, he's got plenty of time to grow. Looks like a skeleton athlete. Last week, Austria debuted another young man, Reet Graf. It was his 24th birthday on race day in Altenburg. Stefan Geisler, another Swiss. new boy. I beg your pardon, Reet Graf was Swiss, yeah. Oh, long sliding steer. You know, this track is a lot like his home track of Innsbruck. Real slow up top, real easy to get down. Tough to get down fast, plus I'm noticing his head's way up. He's gonna to struggle to make the World Cup cut here. Head's way up. Yeah. Again, although he started back in 2011, that was only five years ago, hasn't done full-time seasons. He's still at school. 57-63. 18th best time. So he's ahead of Kevin Boyer of Canada. But these two definitely on the bubble. You know, World Cup debut, congratulations. <laughs> Always nice to have friends and family around. Watch this from the backside. I think he looks a little uncomfortable going in there. Look, he's trying to drag his feet. That's like throwing out a parachute at a time when you want to accelerate. Exit that curve of Chryso slingshot effect to the bottom, and you know, somebody got the parachute in after Chryso, but that definitely cost him. Austria's Florian Auer, Florian and his brother Alex were both sliding last weekend. Florian making his first start in the World Cup this season. And in Altenburg, he finished in 20th place. His brother bumped out of the race in 21st. His brother is out in Calgary yep. at the World, yeah, North America's Cup, and his father, the former world champion, is out there coaching. Christian Auer, one of the big names. Of course, Coach Mickey Grunberger here, another big name. Another world champion. Yeah. You know, Austrians, I think they had six or seven world championships in the 90s. And Andy Six, Schmidt, who looks after the yeah. British team, another, another one, Austrian who won the World Championships. Yeah, they were definitely one of the four running teams. Some Swiss guy named Stalin was involved there yeah. in the 90s. We're probably going to see him next weekend in San Marez. I'm going to try and talk him into unretiring again for Pyeongchang. He could still compete. Second down. Now the question is... He's fighting for uh, to beat his teammate, number one, number two, trying to get in the top 16 or 17, have a chance to yeah. make the cut. 19 to the moment, so he'll be ahead of Kevin Boyer, but not ahead of Stefan Geisler. Doesn't have the speed his teammate did. 18th, he is just by 600 ahead of Stefan Geisler. Well, for Mickey Grunberger, this is work in progress. They've got a bunch of young athletes in Austria. Matthias Grunberger with the most experience at the moment with that uh, knee injury but bringing in the young talent a year out of the Games, maybe even one of them might get a chance to experience an Olympic Games with no pressure on their shoulders. Martins and Thomas Dukos lead from Sumbin Young, Nikita Tregibov, Christopher Grothair and Alexander Trechikov. 20 sleds down, the race is full, eight still to come. Multicolored helmet of Hiro Takahashi from Japan, a former baseball player. Takahashi currently lying in 16th in the World Cup rankings. 18th, 18th and um, 18th are his three race results this season. If you're wondering what the little stripe around the visor is, it's to force the driver to look over it to keep his chin down. Tricks of the trade. Yeah, good start, 5-0-9. Now he needs a nice clinical run here to keep this tidy. He's way more experienced than the last four or five guys in the back of the pack. Out of corner two, little right-hander at three, and then you can actually come uphill over a brow at four. Ooh, That's not much. misleading. That was too much of that pull. Yeah. Yeah. Sled goes very light there and really skiddy. He went from 11th to 14th, so 11th best start, 14th, and that's relative to their mistake up above the Chrysler. 
Okay, out of the Chrysler, nice and clean. Can he carry the speed? All the way down now to 18th spot. Oh, goodness. That start should have been better than this. Speed oh, ebbing out of the sled. Off the uh, pace. This is going to leave him last yes. in the field. Surprised. He's got way too wow. much experience. Out he oh, goes. Look at Koshi. He doesn't want to even know. Gosh, no, I shouldn't think that Hiro Takahashi wants to know much about that either. Yeah. All you got to do is look at the replay up top above Chrysler, and you know that it wasn't the way to do it. Well, he was 12th here last year. What has Hero forgotten this. about sliding this, this track? Look how he gets there. Yeah, that's then he exit comes out, four. hits the wall, bang, and then he gets pushed into the next part of the curve. Down too low. He's too low there, too, in the finish. Look, at now yeah. he's going up high. He took a lot more of that curve than anybody else. Yeah. Exit was okay, but... That little uphill corner four has been the graveyard for so many hopes. Next up for Russia, this is their new boy, Yevgeny Rokoshev. How old is he? Uh, 20... Oh, no, he's... He's some 16 or something. Yeah. yeah. Started? You know, he's got the tall look of Trechkov, thin. And 10th best start. Pretty good. Speed. Here, this is where the mistakes are made, right here. In three, watch four, watch it exit four here. Nice. Slipped to 12th though on time. Made his World Cup debut last weekend. Our reigning youth Olympic champion. Like 18 or something. 17. 17. It won't be 18 till uh, September. Ooh, nine just finally got somebody. He's 14th place, so this looks like he's got a chance to make yeah. the cut. He will make the cut. He'll be in front of Ander Mirambel, Matthias Guggenberger, and this will bump Kevin Boyer. Boyer is out, and in fact, he's behind Mirambel, but the coach breathes a sigh of relief. He held it together. 10th at the start, 15th at the bottom. For the youngest athlete in the field, yeah. 17 years old. I, would, I nearly said yet yeah, last week, actually, it won't be long before we've got an athlete born this century, but we had that last year, don't forget. We had our youth Olympic champion in girl skeleton, who was only 15. Look at that. Boy, that, he dug into the ice there in yeah. that last push. Left a yeah, divot, that didn't he? power he? step, yeah. Look, he needs to go back, divot. step that back That's in. Great. That's a great call there. <laughs> Nine. Well, it comes down, and he guys go back up under the... You don't want to be near the wood here, and he was, you know. And Again, only a third-year slider in any kind. Okay. So here's Jack Thomas's girlfriend there, his dad and his mum there wearing the uh, white hat. So Jack Thomas, you've got to say very nice things about us. They brought us cake, and commentators live on cake. A little bit of a slip there. His dad's a sprint coach. Great start, fifth best start. Yeah. Exit curve one wasn't too bad. Speed 62.7. Rise of that one. The that velocity. That velocity is so important. The deal is they're up at the start to watch him in the first heat. They're not going down to the bottom unless he makes the cut for the second heat. So he's going to make them walk. He's tenth place at the moment. Fifth to tenth. And still a tenth. That's a good sign. Yeah. Watch him exit here and hope he gets out of this next two curves. Are too much there in the exit. A little toe drag just to straighten yeah, the line and attack the same one that Dom Parsons had. 12th 12. place. Dom's 11th. Tied with Reese Thornbury. But this will see him into the race unless there's a catastrophe in the final corner. 14th. Probably going to be 15th or 16th place. Speed's way off the mark though. First World Cup season 14th. and 14th. That's pretty good. So he's safely in the race. Good job, Jack, says EB, the coach. And I'm sure his mum, his dad, his girlfriend will be very happy. So that means they don't get a tour of the TV truck in the second heat. They're going to have to watch down at the finish and wait for him in the second run. There's Jen going up to help with the sled. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, TV doesn't do it justice how steep it is right there. Yeah. That's why they're having such a problem with walking the athletes back. Well, here's into Chrysler. Let's see if he stays consistent. No, up high there. He's going to come back down. He's going to go back up. So he probably used as much ice. Look how high he is there, way above the runner marks. Back down low. He used more of that curve than anybody. 
Well, we've got to say nice things about him. That was a good run into 14th position. Teammate Dom Parsons, just two tenths in front. Next up, and again, trying to break into the field, Kyle Tress from the USA. Kyle, 20th in Whistler, 19th Lake Placid, didn't make the cut last weekend. Altenburg was not a happy hunting ground for the American sliders. Well, the 21st best start time does not help his efforts. And, you know, he's going to make the perfect run here. No mistakes, and he'll have a chance to make the cut. We just saw Jack Thomas start 5.01, and Lokashev of Russia start 5.01. To start two tenths behind midfield runners, he's Kyle Tress with a... Kyle Tress has gone from 21 to 15 to 13 on our scoreboard. Yeah. A lot of work to do, but he's doing it, isn't he? Mistake there, though. It's that little Still bump 13. down low. He gets through here. Right, keeps his head down. He's in the race, and this is going to bump Florian Auer of Austria. This is pretty good. He's got it to 12. to 12. He might be challenging e either one of the Americans. Could be challenging Matt Antoine. No, 13 to the line. Wow, that's a good Tied run. Tied with Barrett Martineau of Canada. To have the 21st best start, to bring it up to 13 on a short track, shows you Kyle knows the track. That's his best run of the year. Yep. I don't think he's had any sign of like a 13 best in the heat. And there's a couple, only a couple slides left that could catch him. Good run for Kyle Tress. Here's the top of the track where some mistakes were made. Halfway point into nine. A little tap there. Doesn't sound like much, but a little Good tap job. like that's five, eight hundreds. Huh? Responding well to the pressure of a start draw outside the top 20. And that's what you've got to do. Turn the negative into a positive. Can Katsuyuki Miyajima make that? First time we've seen him. Or yeah. Came in for a headshot. I don't know if we've... Well, he raced in Altenburg last weekend, 27th that was it. That was in the it. field that was it last of 27 starters. So that was his World Cup debut. We had five World Cup debutants in Altenburg. First European race of the season. Well, well skid off corner one. Start. That's not going to help his efforts. Speed way off, 62. Te teammate Hiro Takahashi. Currently the slowest, he's out of the race. So is Kevin Boyer and Stefan Geisler and Florian Auer. Mattia Gaspar of Italy is on the bubble at the moment. Miyajima, 24th of 25th fastest start. So he's creeping up in the race now in 20th ahead of Mattia Gaspari. A little wild scratching and scratching you can hear as the toes drag. Yeah, well that toe drag is went from 20th back to 21st. It's a fine balance at the moment. Can he find speed in the last corner to take it away from Gaspari? High 127, have a chance he doesn't have that, no. so I don't think he's going to do it. Drifting away at the Chrysler he was in, at the line he's at. 57, 62. Casemiro. Yeah. And this look on the legendary slider from Japan who used to regularly medal on the World Cup circuit, including the World Championships on his track in Nagano in 2003. Miyajima, tidier run than his teammate. Okay, out of curve one. Little skid that's off zero. corner. Two made zero yeah, curve. Zero, yeah. you know, the, the chink curve, that wasn't bad, but that toe drag didn't help. Here, too much on the exit of Kreisel and heads Watch up, him swing toes the out. Hips. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Big Par steers there. Parachute. The big smile from him though, he's drinking the Kool-Aid right now. Next up for Switzerland, we have our two athletes, Marco Rohrer, followed by Riet Graf. Rohrer, the engineering graduate. Again, another man who gets the sled off the blocks with two hands before he gets into the sprinter's position. He's got a pretty good start. Yes, he does. Got pretty big quads. 5.03. Had some problems on the exit, so that 5.03 minus about a 5.10. Now, look at the way he comes on the wrong side of the entrance to curve two, curve three. There's a balance there of pushing, getting on the sled, being comfortable, having some focus out of curve one. It's easy to get around it. You have to be precise. Only six hundreds away at the start, four tenths behind getting to the Chrysler. Twelfth at the moment. 
but these are not great lines. And he's 16, so he continues to fall away. And that didn't help. Exeter nine. He's got his head down, though. Yep. Hanging on in there, 17th place. Should just about make the race at no the expense of Matia though. Gaspari. No he's 17. in, and Gaspari is out. Surprise, Gaspari is out. I expected better than that. From Again him. from Matia, he did a total of six runs this season in Altenburg, four in training here, so this was his 11th run of the year. Most of these other guys have been ice, on ice since October. October. Hey, Marco, good yeah. start. A little problem on the exit of the chink curve, and here too, heads up here as he's looking to, uh, to get on the curve, uh, the ex entrance of curve nine, and he didn't come off of curve nine here very well either. A little late, comes down, back up, checking out the wood. He's in the race though. At the moment, he is lying in 17th place. Two to we go. have two to go. One is his teammate, Reet Graf, who made his World Cup debut last weekend on his 24th birthday. What did you do on your 24th birthday? Yeah, I raced at the top level in my chosen sport. Tall, really tall, at 6'2", 6'3". He's got a frame like, you know, he's younger than Parsons and Antoine, but he's got a frame like, Spaghetti. Those tall guys. <laughs> he is long and lean, isn't he? Really long and lean. And actually, narrow at the shoulder and narrow at the hip isn't an issue here. That's a, a good thing aerodynamically. If you've got big, you know, broad swimmer's shoulders, that's a bigger frontal area. A little shifting of the legs as he entered the crisis. So it's a shame because out. he was in 17th at the start, 21st place into the Chrysal. Shown his inexperience right now. Oh, right there. That curve nine. A little wild moment. Not as wild as some of the bobsleds we saw yesterday off curve nine that were broadside down the track. Uh, this is going to see him at the tail of the field. His second World Cup race does not result in a qualifying spot for the second heat either. Again, with the games now less than 400 days away, the Swiss need to accelerate everybody in their program. So Rick if he sticks with it, will improve with every slide. Not sure the grin's going to get much bigger than it is at the moment, though. Well, I'm sure there was no grinning right here, curve nine. <laughs> Grimacing, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a little tense, because that is not the way you want it. Enter and exit that nemesis, nemesis curve, I think you could call it on this track. That's big smile though, really, really loving being part of this. Our final slider makes his World Cup debut. We met Dennis Lorenzic here two years ago in the World Championships, but this is his first ever World Cup race. 28 year old from Slovenia. He's done just over a dozen Europa Cup races. In fact, it was in Eagles where he made his World Championship debut last February. Little drift out of the zero into curve one. Speed. He's two what? kilometers down the first very, 60 meters. Very much a junior starter, very much a part time career. I said, What sporting background do you have? Didn't do sport. Didn't do sport, just loves sliding. Can't stop himself coming back and hurtling headfirst down ice tracks. And that's, that's one of the reasons why he needs a good sprint coach to try and find that speed over the summer. Well, he had Martin Reynolds setting a sled. Yep. Martin's going to help him out, but you can see this is an inexperienced slider who's challenging to get down this track. They're sliding on this breakfast tray, 75, 80 miles an hour. Some people make it look easy, some people it's tough. Including the World Championships, 14 races in his career. This is his 15th. Martin, you got a yeah. pupil there. you got a lot of work to do with but he's come back and he's keen to learn. And he, you know, the Federation have supported him to come racing in the World Cup. European Championship, that's I'm not, why he's yes. here. And I'm not that's sure whether they're here. supporting him financially or not, but they've at least allowed him to come and compete. But you're absolutely right. Great to have Slovenia here. And look at the lines. You can just see not comfortable almost on any part of the sled on the track. That's set up, you know, that's your trips and getting comfortable with where your rock is and your runners, and, yep. you know, so you can come down the track and not do this, because this is not how to do it. 
And it's the experience of knowing what a certain move will have as an effect rather than having to react to the effect. And that only comes with experience on the ice. Needs another 100 trips someplace. Exactly so. So our first heat is complete. We know the 20 going through. And the last of those to compete in heat two will be our leader, Martin Stukors of Latvia. He leads his brother Thomas by two hundredths of a second. Third place is a quarter second back, fourth three tenths back. It could be a two horse race. But who's going to be the first line out of the box? First. Yeah, first on the ice will be Dave Kresh Cheshin. He's 20th. He was first on the ice in yeah. the first heat. But look at that gap. First to second, dead heat effectively. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, pretty much a dead heat. There's 900s, 1100s in it. And, and that's, that, you know, we're going to see that all the way down. We've actually got dead heats in the order as well. So we will have some very close racing. Barrett Martineau, Carl Tress tied to the 100th. Don Parsons, Reese Thornbury tied to the 100th. Jack Thomas, Andy Morambel, 100th apart. And behind them a tie, 200s further back. Four sleds covered by 300s. I think it's not going to be insane. It's going to be very well worth watching. Join John Morgan. Me, Martin Haven, and the rest of the IBSF TV crew when we come back with our second and deciding heat. 3.15 local, 14.15 GMT. Do the calculations for your time zone. We'll see you then back on ice here in Winterburn.